tight on Mark Bickley. And as we count down to what is effectively an elimination final against the Swans, welcome to the Crows Show, brought to you by the new Hungry Jacks Roadhouse Whopper. In today's show... The sole purpose why I want to be here is just to make sure this group gets back to playing some finals because it's been far too long. Drew, hopefully I've given you something across the journey because I leave a better person for knowing you guys. But first, an inexperienced and unsettled defence has been perhaps the club's biggest challenge this year. As injuries have taken their toll, Scott Burns has had to remodel the back line on the run, but the newcomers have adapted seamlessly to their new roles. Scott credits the Sandful team with making it easier for players to adjust to the elite game. A few unfortunate injuries, but um, it's been pretty pleasing in the sense that uh, we've had the boys come in and, and play some pretty decent football. They haven't got a huge amount of games experience, but they've been in the system for a little bit. If you look at Joshy Worrell's fourth year, uh, even Mark Keane's probably three years AFL, if you include two at, two at Collingwood, and Borlase has been third year as well, so nearly three years. So they have had experience in the system. Um, it's pretty important to get those two or three pre-seasons in as well. So it's not as if you're throwing a 18-year-old key position player into it. It's probably more the, the tightness of the group, the leadership. There, there's a lot of times where one or two things go against you at this level and you can go back into your shell, but they get around to support each other. Um, and you can see behind the goals vision or if you're sitting behind the goals game day, just looking at the defenders, there's a lot of finger pointing and instructions getting set up. So they're getting prepared for the next contest or, or what's going to happen next. Um, and one thing we haven't spoken about, we talk about the young blokes, but... Wayne Miller, Miller and, um, and Hingey have been fantastic as well. Now Hingey's, once again, young in terms of games experience, but he's about six years in an AFL system. So those two blokes have, uh, have been fantastic over the last few weeks. And um, we get Brodie Smith who moves up to a wing, but Brodie's always swiveling his head and instructing as well behind to support and help. Well, the, the beauty is that the, the SNFL team, they, they play the way we want to play. So they've played a system, trained in a system um, that we need them to adapt to at the next level. The other thing is all pre-season and in season, like Keeney and, and Borlase have played on um, Fogarty and Walker at training. So they're playing against good players a lot, a lot of the time. And if we can get enough pressure and heat around the ball, that certainly helps us a lot behind the ball. So there's no opposition player coming shoulders out, running into a, um, or breaking the paint from around 50 and our boys are a bit scattered behind the ball. So it's, it's been a real team defense that has helped. A mid-season casualty, of course, was Tom Duday, who ruptured the ACL in his right knee. Unfortunately, Tom suffered the same injury to his left knee three years ago. So, when he visited Samri recently, he was keen to learn more about the importance of MRIs in diagnosis. All right, so we'll start with an easy one. Uh, why do people have MRIs? The thing with MRIs, we can get amazing uh, detail of uh, soft tissues, and also look at bone and cartilage. So uh, we can scan right from the top of the head down to your tip of your little toe, if you like, um, getting incredible detail of what's going on inside. And then I suppose a question that most people ask before their, their first MRI is, is an MRI safe? Yes, MRI is uh, very safe. Um, doesn't use any ionizing radiation, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, you have to be a little bit careful with uh, metal because the uh, MRI machine is a big magnet so uh, the uh, safety questionnaires run through quite carefully with our technologists Definitely. Um, before uh, the patients can get into the machine. So will I feel anything during my MRI? Yeah, so as part of, your, of your MRI, a bit of energy will be put into your body and we see what we get from that. And so some of that energy is converted into heat. So some people feel like they get a little bit warm during their scan. Um, and some patients also say they get a bit of tingling or pins and needles or muscle twitching in their arms and legs. That's also normal, but not everyone will get that. One thing I've always been curious of, why is it so noisy in the MRI machine? Yeah, so as part of the imaging process, part of the machine has to turn on and off repeatedly to try and find the anatomy that we're looking at and place it in the picture. Yep. And as it switches on and off, it creates a lot of vibrations and that's released as sound. So we do give you headphones and earplugs to try and um, remove the noise slightly, but you do still hear it over that. So I've had a few MRIs in my time. One thing I've always wondered is, why do they take so long? 
Yeah, so for any part of the body, we take anywhere between five to 15 different pictures and each one takes about two to three minutes and then repeat the process over and over until we get an image that can be interpreted by the doctors. But fortunately, like other areas in life, we now have artificial intelligence helping us out. So a knee MRI, for example, which used to take 30 minutes, now takes about seven minutes. Oh, cool, that does make me feel better. This would be a big upset if they could knock over Brisbane and really unsettle one of the Premiership favourites. So we're ready to go. Krauts has been an excellent late addition this season to Lairs. They can play together. Walker Wanter stolen by McAdam. Text won't mind at all. Walker, Rochelle, the sharpest of hands. And the finish was there. While we didn't get the win at the Gabba, my favourite moment came after the match when the coaches and players got behind the Matildas watching them win an epic quarterfinal against France. What an amazing World Cup it has been for the Matildas. I love playing footy at the Crows. There's so many special times, special moments, but this one's my favourite. Bounces, she's had three, she looks back, runs away from McDonald, Meg won't catch her to the top of the square and kicks the goal. I'm lucky I get to see it as it's happening, and you can too. Buy a membership and be part of the Crows family. <laughs> It all starts with a showdown on September 2 at Nord Oval. Join the Crows family today at crowsmembership.com.au. The incredible growth in the women's game has driven a transformation across the state. We'll check that out shortly.
Oh, look, I love this group. I love this footy club so much. And then, I don't know, I just love what we're building at the moment too. So I'm very excited for what we can produce, but probably more excited about how this season can finish for us. Um, disappointing on the weekend, but look, we get this weekend right and the next couple of weeks going ahead um, could be some real exciting times. That's the sole purpose why I want to be here is just to make sure this group gets back to playing some finals because it's been far too long. So we've got an opportunity, but we need to do everything right. What great news for Adelaide fans. Rory Sloan extending his career by another season. What a player he's been. Women's football has generated the most rapid development of the game ever seen. Clubs, large and small, are having to build new facilities or upgrade existing amenities to cope with the incredible numbers of girls and young women eager to take up the sport. Thanks to Bendigo Bank, let's check out how this revolution in grassroots footy is being managed. For every you know, one team that we had in 2010, there's about 17 teams. So heaps more people using our facilities. So that's been a huge driver and that's particularly gone into um, female change rooms. That's been our main focus over the last sort of five or six years. We've probably got about 35 projects on the go at the moment. Um, some current ones, uh, Seton Ramblers has just been demolished and there'll be a new facility there. Tanunda Football Club's uh, about to be finished um, and some new ones sort of uh, over at Kangaroo Island. Western Districts is a really important project for us uh, following the fires that happened over there so that one would nearly be finished as well. It's a real um, shared funding model so a lot of the clubs will uh, go to their local council so local government is a really key stakeholder of ours. There will also be some state funding um, and football um, funding from the clubs as well. We have guidelines that um, we really encourage clubs to follow and try and meet um, in their design work and you know, we're really concentrating on making sure there's really good lighting at all our ovals so that that's increasing capacity at the ovals for both matches but also to increase the quality of training as well. We all know that Toyota is a generous supporter of the grassroots game and each week on the show they're asking you to supply your favourite highlight from your local match or league. Today we're featuring the Great Southern Football League Women's A-Grade Grand Final which was won by Wollonga. They beat Yankalilla and Counter Bay by 36 points. If you record a highlight or a special moment from your local competition, simply email your entry to crowsshow at afc.com.au to be in the running to win a Crows merchandise pack. Did you know, if you own a Toyota and you're a Crows member, you can receive a $250 voucher towards your next service. Just complete a registration form to go into the draw. There's 20 winners every month and you've got until August 31st to enter. For more information, go to crowsmembership.com.au. Fantastic to be here on this Sunday morning, mate. All things going really well. I'm excited for a big show. Mate, rugged up as well. We've got the Crows jacket on, <laughs> the Crows beanie. Join myself, Sauce and Tomo, on the Crows radio show every Sunday morning, live from 9 till 10 on Triple M. And if you miss the show, download it for free on the Listener app. That's L-I-S-T-N-R. It's not going to come as much as a surprise to anyone in the room that, that I'm retiring. Um, retiring is obviously inevitable. Um, and for Shoei, Murph and Woz, I'll use some examples so you can understand what that means. It's inevitable like Tex answering a question wrong in a meeting, <laughs> like Laird Man going bald, or Matt getting Ali to hide Sharon's in the cupboard so when he opens them they fall out and he can practice his touch. <laughs> and I just want to share a few moments that I had written down uh, in my gratitude journal um, that sort of encapsulate what we're trying to do here in the uh, prioritising others space. The first one was you, uh, Big Birder. Um, early days you were spending hours of your time researching different ways to help my concussion and my symptoms. <sighs> Texan, 
Uh, half the time you're calling just to f***ing razz me up, um, but you're always calling to check how I am. Then there's Matty. Um, everyone needs a friend like Matt. I couldn't uh, possibly sum up what he has done for me. Then there's one um, uh, for the whole room. Uh, the couple of times that I came in to the rooms pre-game, you made me feel so special without even knowing. Every one of you come up with a smile and said hi and give me a hug. It'd be remiss of me if I didn't say a couple of thank yous. I'll start with the medical team. I was the only bloke without a medical degree to spend 15 hours a week in the doc slash physio rooms. To all the coaches in the room, um, the past and the present ones, I want to say a special thanks to um, Pikey and Campo um, and Reedy and Haggis for their roles um, in getting me to the club. Um, I hated footy uh, before they convinced me to come here and, and I leave loving it more than I ever have. Thanks again to everyone in this room. Hopefully I've given you something across the journey because I leave a better person for knowing you guys. Thank you. Unfortunately for Paul, his injury came at the worst possible time, coming off a career best season. We wish him all the best. Now, all players have their favourite Crows memories. And each week, Ben Keyes has been asking his teammates to recall their biggest highlight. He grabs them for a coffee catch-up at Jack's Cafe, thanks to Hungry Jack's. Hey guys, welcome back to the Jack's Cafe Corner. Massive shout out to our sponsor, Hungry Jack's. We appreciate what you do. I've got an awesome guest this week, guys. I've got the man, the myth, Darcy Fogarty. Welcome to the show, Darcy. Thanks for having me. Fog, tell us a little bit about where you were drafted from and uh, how you ended up on the Adelaide Crows list. Yep, so I um, grew up playing my junior footy at Lucendale. Um, played there till I was about 15 and then came up to Adelaide for school at Ross Trevor and played majority of my footy there and at the, the Mighty Bays. So um, that's probably my pathway and where she all began. Yeah, you're a proud South Australian, clearly. Um, when you got to the club, who were some of the mentors that looked after you? Who were some of the older guys that uh, took you under the wing at the club? Um, I think the obvious one is probably just the Texan, so I've sort of tried to follow him as closely as I could um, without being too annoying, so um, he's definitely a big one. Him and Tom Lynch would probably be the two that, that have sort of taken me under and sort of given me the most guidance throughout my career, and um, yes, they're two people that I'll always be grateful for. Das, what about off-field? What are some of your interests uh, outside of footy, outside of the club? Um, yeah, so growing up on a farm, I've obviously got that passion that's probably um, up there with footy as one of my main passions. So um, at the moment, it's sort of working in how I can fit that into my lifestyle at the moment, um, being in Adelaide and obviously being a footballer. How, how would someone like me go out on the farm? Would you ever take me out, get, get me under the wing? or? We could. I reckon it'd be, <laughs> it'd be tricky, but nah, it would make you work. Probably come back with sore hands and some tears in the eye, but... Definitely. Yeah. Dash, you've been at the club a while now, played a lot of footy, had some big moments. What's been your favourite Crows moment so far in your career? Personally, from a game, it would be the Port Adelaide game, just gone, just the showdown just gone. So we obviously played really good footy um, against the home crowd as well and to be able to beat them by a few goals and sort of, I think it was more so the, the final minutes when we know we had the game wrapped up. So. Absolutely. 50,000 people at the Thanks for the chat, Dars. Killed it, mate. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. If the Crows want to play finals, they must win tonight. Thanks to Flight Centre, let's check in on how they match up against the Swans. Yeah, look, um, Tom Hickey is a very crafty ruckman. Uh, I was lucky enough to work with him at West Coast for a couple of years. Um, and he's got the ability to, to go either side at centre bounce. He's very crafty around the ground, got really good touch. He loves to grab the ball out of the ruck, so hopefully we can nullify that this weekend. Uh, but yeah, he's got some, some tricks. So um, he's been around for a long period of time and he's gonna certainly challenge us at times, but hopefully uh, Phil Thorpe and O'Brien can do the work for us. Without Buddy there, it, it does change their look ahead of the ball a little bit. Uh, and no doubt the, the planning from Scotty Burns and his defenders uh, does change to a certain degree. Um, but if anything, we've seen them be a bit more aggressive with their ball movement to, to allow the likes of Logan McDonald, Joel Amati, uh, and these guys play to their strengths ahead of the ball as well. So um, Buddy there makes them better in certain ways, but without him there, they've also changed to be even more threatening in certain ways. So um, either way, it's going to be a big challenge. My favourite Sydney game, and I remember it vividly, was the 1998 semi-final 
We led all day with Peter Vardy starring on the wing with six goals. A couple of the Swans players remembered something happened earlier tonight. Vardy to kick number oh, he's six. He's done it again. He's done it again. Vardy's kicked six. And of course, that season turned out pretty well. As we wrap up the show, a reminder to check out the club's website for all the latest news. And remember, the social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for your company and I look forward to joining you again next Saturday before the Sandful Match of the Round. Bye for now and go the Crows. The Crow Show was brought to you by Hungry Jack's new Roadhouse Whopper.